All right, so welcome everybody to uh, this week's ACME material seminar. Uh, today, we are fortunate to have uh, Dr. Hao Xiang Li from Oak Ridge National Laboratory. Uh, Dr. Li uh, got his PhD at the University of Colorado Boulder. Um, his work uh, um, focuses on probing quantum many body states uh, using various x ray scattering and ARPES techniques. Um, his current research interest is the interaction of strong correlation and non -trivial, trivial band topology. Uh, with that, I will let Hao Xiang explain the rest of his uh, <laughs> interests and, and get going. Um, yeah, all right, go ahead. All right, thank you, Adam. And thank you for the invitation. And thanks to everybody for coming to my talk here at ACME. Um, so today I will give a talk on unconventional charge density wave and intertwined orders in the newly found Kagome superconductors, uh, which is a vanadium based Kagome network with alkali and, and alkali metal and antimony compounds. So, oops. So this work is um, conducted using uh, angle result photo emission spectroscopy and X-ray scattering. Uh, we are a newly founded spectroscopy group, uh, sort of at ORNL, uh, with staff member Hu Miao, Hong Yang Li, and Rob Moore. Um, we use angle result photo emission spectroscopy RPAS to probe electronic band structures, uh, low energy excitations, or and extract it. Uh, many body information from uh, many information from many body interactions from the electron from the electron uh, photo emission spectroscopy. This is an elect photon in electron out technique that actually measure that measure the momentum and energy of the outgoing photoelectrons. And thus we can actually directly measure electronic dynamics and electronic structures inside materials. Uh, another major things that we will talk, talk today and we use electric x-ray various x-ray scattering techniques are elastic or inelastic x-ray scattering, uh, mostly using single charm based facilities um, and also resonance or non-resonance uh, electronic scatterings. So we can use, we use these with high resolution X-ray, say, for example, using high resolution, high resolution X-ray beam from single charm source to probing uh, phonon structure or phonon dynamics or using the resonant X-ray tuned to the resonant edge of the material to study the charge or potentially polarization, we can study spin to uh, excitations inside materials. And certainly this is also for the study of strong correlations in the compound or many body interactions inside the compound. And can also extract it, say topological band structures in, in, in magnon or phonons uh, that can also be measured with X-ray. Um, the subjects we focused on mostly on cargo main metal these days, which is as highly uh, uh, hot topics in the uh, condensed metal physics field. Um, it not only contain non-trivial electronic structure such as topo topological uh, band structures, say Dirac cones, and also flat band dispersion that generates strong electronic correlations. Um, and it also have many intertwined electronic instabilities and symmetry breaking orders such as superconducting orders and CDW, et cetera, et cetera. We also focus on strong spin. We also work on quantum spin liquid, which is sort of a, a spectral thing here in OI now. Uh, we work a lot on spin liquid in other departments, in uh, cross groups and uh, cross division. Um, and also we look at topological phonons. So if any of the audience interesting, interested in the subjects that we study, uh, broad subjects that we study, within our small spectroscopy group here at OINL are welcome to discuss or reach out to us for collaborations. So today I will focus on the Kagome network and uh, which actually contains three distinct features uh, we introduced later, flat band Fermi, uh, Dirac fermions and Van Hoek singularity. Um, this is an example of the Kagome network, which I'll talk more later. And the newly found alkali metal vanadium Kagome network uh, is the first uh, discovery of the Van Hoek feelings, which basically means the settle point that go uh, right, sitting right exactly at the Fermi energy, 
This cre create a lot of electronic uh, instabilities that generate charge density wave state, which I will focus today, and superconductivity, pneumatic orders, et cetera, et cetera, and pair density wave, et cetera, et cetera. So today I will focus on the charge density wave that generated at the uh, saddle point features. Uh, and this is a unconventional charge density wave in the terms that it does not show any quantum anomaly or acoustic phonon, or to be side is acoustic phonon anomaly, which is typically a signatures in conventional charge density wave in understanding of uh, previous theories from power transitions. And, and, more, in, and more weirdly is that uh, this charge density wave actually contains two different charge orders emerge in the same CDW transitions emerge simultaneously, one in plane orders and one out of plane orders that, and, uh, that I, coexist and intercoupling to each other's, uh, but they can be separated under high pressure or probably some other uh, experimental techniques too. So this will be a outlines of my topic today. Uh, let me first give a introductions of intertwined symmetry breaking orders. Symmetry breaking orders arising from coherent electronic correlations it's like making degree of freedom such as spins or electrons or basically any charge or lattice motions organized uh, with a co-organized behaviors inside materials. Just like a, uh, every vehicle on the highway following the traffic rules and behave nicely to each other, not, coffee, not causing chaotic, chaotic traffic jam, et cetera. But intertwined symmetry breaking orders it seems like a, it's like a highway intersection, a busy highway intersections too, that have um, different paths. Where they have different paths to crossing each other's. They could be they could be competing, such as a diverging highway to uh, di such a di diverging highway to um, for competition for competition uh, symmetry breaking orders, or they can be probably collaborating. Uh, or facilitate enhancing each other, uh, or actually, um, or actually does not decouple to each other, but somehow they just coexist. Although this is this type of uh, uh, symmetry breaking order is kind of rare, rare, rare. So one of the classic example of these uh, intertwined symmetry breaking orders is in high temperature superconductor cooperate, where the superconducting state the famous high TC superconducting state is coexisting or, precur or preceded by charge density wave order. And there's a large overlap in this area. And certainly on the other hand, the parent compound ground state oval has anti ferromagnetic order, which is the spin, uh, which is a spin order that actually with a, with a fluctuating or incoherent order uh, spin correlation all the way extended to the superconductivity and also the charge density wave orders. And recent file twisted bibliographing also is an interesting subject in this field because it can reproduce many of these high TC superconductors uh, phase diagram and it also have uh, many intertwined symmetry, symmetry breaking orders. Kagome lattice system is also another, this uh, material uh, that hosts many interesting topological orders I'm um, sorry, many interesting uh, strong uh, symmetry breaking orders due to the, um, it's due to the uh, key features of a frustrated geometry. Um, it's a 2D network with corner share triangles. Um, the, frustra the frustrating geometry, most either spin uh, or electrons uh, give rise to a strong correlated natures of, the, uh, of this material. And another more, uh, and the, and another feature is, a, uh, is due to the sublattice interference or actually the Brock wave functions interference in the uh, triangle, triangular sublattice inside this material. Uh, and this inter Brock wave function interference then give rise to actually a non-trivial electronic structure, which I will talk about later with flat band, Dirac cones and the Van Hoff singular uh, saddle points that actually uh, give rise to a lot of electronic in, uh, instabilities. Um, 
Previously, study has most on this material mostly focused on quantum spin liquid structures. It's actually frustrated spin uh, inside this material. Um, but then, uh, and but it has also been theoretically pre predicted to host magnetism and superconductivity because of the uh, electronic instability due to the high density of state, uh, high density of state that can move towards at locating at exactly at the Fermi level. Um, certainly for correlations, there are also uh, mock physics related studies on this material uh, and more uh, and a more exert, observe, and more uh, exotic state would be a theoretically proposed fractional anomalous quantum Hall effect by the combination of, of topological non-trivial topological uh, structures inside the uh, high density of state flat bands features. Uh, this is this material is also proposed to be a uh, candidate host for this fractional anomalous quantum Hall effect, with, but it hasn't ever been discovered yet. So uh, it's also the goal that we're aiming at looking at is searching for this uh, uh, these structures on in, in various compound. So there are three uh, from a basic type binding model with. Uh, with the three nearest neighbor hopping inside these uh, corner shared triangles in the cargo wing network. Um, we can actually have a brief, we can actually have a brief view of the uh, electronic structures from based on simple type binding model calculations. So, and even though this is actually a S wave based uh, anisotropy and only nearest neighbor consider uh, in the pipe binding model, uh, these electronic structure actually persist in in if in other orbitals uh, and in D wave or P wave orbital electrons, or actually in other in a more uh, three I mean slightly non two Z two dimensional quasi three D a quasi two dimensional uh, network. Also show very this structure is quite uh, quite robust in some sense. So. The first feature we can notice in this electronic structure is the flat band state, which I just talked about. Uh, this is a dispersionless uh, electronic structures with, with the exactly flat electronic dispersion. It shows uh, a extremely high density of state. When it moves towards the Fermi level, this, hu this huge high density of giant, giant high dens uh, density of state, uh, we create a strong electronic instability in the materials and it has long been proposed in the 90s or 80s or in late 80s that it can host magnetism and also superconductivity. Um, and our recent study also have also been looking for this frag band state uh, with some tunings uh, with the doping and tuning compound trying to move chemical potential towards the frag band state in some of this material with limited success but we does achieve magnetisms uh, by simply tuning the flat band state uh, with a parent non-magnetic parent compound. So here's just an example of observed RPS spectres that showing some of these flat band features. It may not be for perfectly flat band in real, mater real life material comparing to the uh, toy model type binding. It may not look exactly like the same, but still, it's a flat band that cover a large area of the Brillouin zone. So another feature is the Dirac fermion, uh, which is the Dirac cone features uh, lying inside this material. It has previously studied in the uh, magnetic compound uh, with the uh, magnetic compound uh, magnetic elements that forming the cargo may layer, such as the iron tin, the iron compound forming the cargo may layer to show to generate uh, a study of the magnetic topological state uh, by magnetic order tuned uh, Dirac, uh, Dirac state in this material. Um, and the third features, which is, will be the focus of today is actually the settle point features showing here. Uh, on the left, it's an example of the settle point. Um, this electronic structure have a unique feature that um, it, it's actually a, on, the, on the boundary of a topological electronic changes from electron and the whole pocket. So a small tweak of the energy 
the elect the Fermi surface we tweaking from the whole uh, whole Fermi surface or to to the electron charge. And this saddle point feature inside Brian zone is located at the hexagonal zone edge uh, of its Kagome lattice, all called the M point. And in theory predictions, this zone edge uh, saddle point can give right can uh, also, although not as high as the uh, flat band state that generate almost like infinite uh, density of state, this saddle point feature still also generate a high peaks of density of state at the zone, at the zone boundary. And it gives rise to three distinct uh, scattering rate vectors that previous uh, earliest uh, theoretical uh, work back in 2013, already predicted uh, multiple, uh, a multiple electronic instability or Fermi, Fermi surface instability can generate it from this electronic structure when it's sitting right at the Fermi energy. So the for each for, uh, phase diagram, either the magnetism, ferromagnetic or uh, ferromagnetism, uh, spin or charge orders, or, and also a unique charge bonding orders and you can also relate it to D wave or even F, F, uh, F wave superconductivity. So the rich phase diagram is basically the motivations of the initial study on people looking, searching for this uh, type of materials. And a recently found, newly found compound. This is actually a new compound that synthesis uh, first, in, first in back in 2020 or late 2020 actually. So this compound is a, uh, has a vanadium-based Kagome network, which I can show here as the blue dot, or the plan. with the uh, cesium and the antimony atoms actually go, uh, where well, the cesium and antimony atom forming and hexagonal uh, lattice uh, layers out of plane, out of the Kagome uh, network plane. Well, at the center actually of the Kagome layer, not showing exactly here, there's actually also an antimony, uh, antimony element, uh, antimony atoms sitting right at the center of the uh, Kagome structures. So from, from electronics calculation from DFT, this compound exactly shows a Van Hoff phalanx. And we can also probe from the RPA spectrum that I will show more details later that these Kagome features uh, shows a so a very typical Kagome uh, electronic structures with a Dirac cone that you can see from at the K point, and these uh, the uh, the saddle point exactly going skimming through the Fermi level at the end point. So uh, surprisingly or not surprisingly, uh, this Kagome material does hold a very complex phase diagram uh, with multiple intertwined uh, symmetry breaking orders. The first one coming from high temperature to low one. The first one would be a charge density wave, a two by two charge density wave orders forming at hundred Kelvin. This charge, charge density wave order is exactly uh, pre as predicted by previous theoretical work for the three Q scattering wave between the, van between the saddle points from zone boundary to zone boundary. And, but interestingly, this CDW uh, weight vector shows a time reversal symmetry breaking uh, signatures. And it also coincides with a dry anomalous Hall effect, which I will talk more in details. Going lower in temperature, there's a controversial for a not unim, unidirectional charge order, uh, which actually uh, proposed to cause symmetry, uh, rotation symmetry breaking uh, and electronic pneumaticity state. But this, this, uh, this part of the phase diagram is a bit uh, controversial and I will talk about more in details. Um, at lower temperatures specifically, um, that has the superconductivity form, um, although it's not, it's, it's not the first found uh, Kagome superconductors, but um, it, is the, it is the first one that actually gave a really high and observable TC of up to 3.5 Kelvin at ambient temp pressure. And when we go to high pressure, it can be tripled up to eight cal seven to eight Kelvins, oh, sorry, double up to seven or eight Kelvins uh, for TC. 
and in either STM or R plus work has found this is a multi-gap superconductors or some proposes actually D-wave gap superconductors. So, but this part is not settled yet. And a recent nature paper also probing, uh, pointing out a pair density wave observed from STM work. And they point to this pair density wave forming a vortex-like structures. And they give it a name as a roton pair density wave. So, so for the CDW, uh, which I will, will be the main topic today, that it emerged around 100 Kelvin. Uh, 100, 102 or 103 Kelvin. And the cesium compound has lower, 92 or 93. And there's another potassium compound actually go even lower around 80 or around 70-ish to 80 Kelvin uh, transition temperatures. And this CDW can be clearly observed in the STM tomography. And by doing just simple Fourier transform, you can find a two by two by two wave vector uh, right, sitting right between the zone center, the gamma point and the black peak uh, so, and from DFT, basic DFT calculations, the pristine compound has, uh, it has, or this spontaneous symmetry breaking has been predicted. That has a lower, that, but it has two, the CDW has two potentially uh, for modulations. One is a star of David structures, which is forming as a star of David, basically. That's what it gets the name from. And in, in the other one is forming an inverse star of David. Basically, it's an inverse movement of the palladium uh, compound, uh, of the palladium atoms on the cargo may layer. But all these, uh, all these calculation of instability are still uh, of us are actually predicted inside the uh, cargo may layer, vanadium cargo may layer, and the, this charge distortion for the CDW, for the charge density wave, it's in on the uh, vanadium atom. So uh, certainly with DF phonon structure, DFT phonon structure, there are negative frequency, which is basically pointing to a uh, in in unstable pristine uh, lattice structures. While these two, both of star of David and inverse star of David, or right now people prefer the name of trihexagonal instead of inverse star of David <laughs> because it's too long the name. Um, can give you a stable structures, but uh, what is actually exactly uh, what exactly is the charge modulations in the CDW state? It's uh, unknown, and some probably point some study pointing to one, some study pointing to the other structure. So this is unsettled. Um, but uh, as I pointed out before, this STM tomography can directly show how this uh, how this uh, modulation. Uh, the superstructures forming on the uh, in, inside the materials, and by simple Fourier transform, they are the C they can extract the CDW black peak. Uh, sorry, CDW wave vectors uh, that form uh, of a Q of two by two Q. Um, the interesting part is that the intensity of these vector peaks extracted from the CDW has a chiral symmetry. Um, and which you can directly see from the amplitude of the CDW peak. And more interestingly is that by changing magnetic field from say, you apply magnetic field from two Tesla, changing from say two plus two Tesla to negative two Tesla, one can actually switch this uh, chiral, uh, chiral modulations of the vector, of, of the vector peaks. And this actually indicate a time reversal symmetry breaking in this material. However, this cargo main material has no magnetic compounds and neutron and mu SR measurement has confirmed that there's no static magnetic orders nor any local magnetic local moments inside these materials. So in this pure, completely non-magnetic material, first we can, as I mentioned before, there's a dry anomalous Hall effect rising together with the uh, CDW transition. And inside the CDW uh, micro, uh, wave vectors, observing from this microscopic probe of STM, scanning tunneling microscope. 
uh, it show, also show this chiral symmetry. So how come a charge, this is, would be his first discovery of a tie reversal symmetry breaking uh, conducted by a uh, charge density wave. That actually make this charge density wave very, a very interesting subject for the study uh, inside this material. Among many of these complex uh, intertwined symmetry breaking orders. And this type of reversal symmetry breaking can also be, uh, it's also confirmed, it's then confirmed by the mu SR measurement that they show a relaxation rate of the, the spin relaxation rate anomaly emerge right at the um, transition of the CDWs and not at the zero field measurement when they apply a uh, non magnetic field. Uh, magnetic uh, magnetic field uh, measurement. These kind of anom relaxation rate anomaly persist. So, although the detailed determinations of how it how the MSR is are interpreted as the time reversal symmetry breaking, there's a lot of details going on. So, uh, that should go look into the detail uh, papers, which will be appear in Nature very soon. So, um, in theory. When they constructed a simple time binding models structures with basically just F as wave uh, of it, and calculating one band model, they found there's non trivial churn numbers inside, the, uh, inside this material's electronic structures, and including the near, uh, including near the Fermi level. And by the nesting, and sort of also by the nesting of the Van Hove. Um, that generating that by the nesting of these non-trivial churn number band structures, uh, we got the electronics, uh, we got a charge density wave, and it gave rise to a chiral flux phase inside the sublattices of this of the uh, um of the uh, of this cargo main network. So some believe this is actually the origin of the symmetry breaking orders. And this, uh, this chiral structures is actually due to a strong sublattice interference or sublattice interactions between the tri between atoms sitting right inside these uh, triangular sublattices. Um, and one thing, for one thing, is that this symmetry breaking or this symmetry breaking or chirality is actually arising from the uh, imaginary part. Of, and this uh, this sublattice interference somehow gives rise to an imaginary part or imaginary part for the order parameters, and it turns out to be an orbital current forming inside sublattices. Although in general it will have uh, reverse features that avoid accumulating charge inside any part of this uh, in the in the global view of the in the global view of the lattice. But for localized uh, probing, it does break symmetry, time reversal symmetry inside the uh, inside the cargo main network. So, in summary of the theory, actually, there is a DFT predictions of star of David inverse star of David instability, and time reversal symmetry breaking or chiral flux phase arising from arising from some core orbital current or actually a bond charge bond order inside this uh, cargo main network, but this is unsettled and there's some proper news theory popping out. Uh, and, but with this, some of, uh, with this charge bond ordering, which is uh, proposed in one of the PRO theory work, that will possess a angular, non-trivial angular momentum for the electron, uh, for the particle hole pairing. As CTW is arising from particle hole pairing, um, particle pairing on the Fermi surface that generate the Fermi surface instability instead of uh, electron electron or particle particle pairing for the superconductivity. So this CDW state also is then proposed to be inset have a P wave particle pairing just similar if you're comparing to P wave superconductivity for the electronic uh, pairing, but this is not uh, directly observed in or confirmed by experiment yet. So it's just part of the theory uh, proposal inside this material. And the interesting, another interest, very interesting uh, perspective of this material is the roton paradise way, where from observing from STM, 
uh, there's a strong, there's a pair density wave that directly found in the tomography, STM tomography, that this, uh, this pair density wave form a chiral or uh, actual vertex-like structures that the, one of the theory collaborators in that paper gave it the name as a roton as the um, correlation, uh, correlation effect, uh, co uh, correlation function extracted from the uh, pair density wave give rise a roton-like dispersions for roton gap in the, uh, in the pair density dispersions. Although this is not like the typical superfluid roton that actually involve a true vortex excitations. Uh, this is non-magnetic state, uh, but forming, but, but just giving rise to uh, comparison to the uh, superfluid roton. And the more interesting thing is that above that pair density rate feature, uh, pair density rate temperature scale, there is actually a pseudo gap state emerging above the TC, uh, also above the pair density rate energy scale. Um, this coexistence with the CDW state uh, and traditionally, if you say in recuperate, the pseudo gap state is somehow some, in some parts of the phase diagram is related to the charge density wave. So uh, the STM works actually strongly claim that uh, this pseudo gap state is actually evolving from the past density wave at much lower temperatures. So the then which pointing to a strong connection of this pair density wave to the CDW state at higher temperatures. And another important finding is the double dome superconducting phase with high pressures, uh, which I probably would give it more features here, but there's a double dome. Uh, there's one, at least the, one of the peak uh, of the superconducting dome features or highest TC under high pressure at about two gigapascal. Uh, it's coincide with the disappearance of the CDW phase diagram. So I'll talk more about this afterwards in my, uh, in my data correlated to the high pressures measurement. So from our Fermi surface uh, measurement, this is uh, based on, uh, on RPAS. Uh, this electronic, the electronic structure of this material is very, light, very close to what predicted in theory. It has a Van Hoff singularity, um, Van Hoff features or actual settle point feature uh, lie exactly at the end point, as I pointed out in the uh, dispersion uh, before. Um, and, but interestingly, um, not like the theory or the toy mod, well, theory point, my toy point model before, um, this material actually has a three dimensional charge standard rate superstructure. As we found from cyclotron based XRD, uh, XRD measurement, that at L equal to zero, L equal to 0.5. They both show a, uh, a large, a, a clear charge density rate uh, bracket peak for uh, sharp, with sharp coherence at both. Uh, so this is not like a uh, purely two dimensional charge density rate proposed in the theory uh, and not certainly not only, rely, not, not only residing only in the in-plane vanadium cargomate network. And this actually raised a lot of interesting questions. Um, another feature would be uh, the phonon response to the charge density wave that typically is either, it either residing in the cone anomaly, which is a singular breakdown of the phonon dispersion uh, evolving uh, from Break down phonon dispersions down to zero for the singular at the uh, at the Q at the CDW Q vector. This is called normally is proposed in the I piles trans, uh, transitions for charge density rate initially developed in, in the 50s. Or another more recently proposed mechanism is the e electron phonon coupling, a strong electron phonon coupling. It does not break down at one singularity, one point. It breaks down at a more large energy area area covering a large, a larger Q scale, uh, Q momentum area of the phonon dispersions. So uh, this either the co-anomaly or a strong electron phonon coupling has been observed in inelastic X-ray scattering uh, in other CDW material before, which is not, which is supposed to be a signature of conventional charge density wave, 
So this is the first uh, features that we try to look into. And we use resonant, uh, off resonant in less X-ray scattering to probe these phonon excitations with MUV scale resolutions. And also we would, I will introduce later, we use also use on resonant elastic, X, uh, elastic X-ray scattering to probe um, diffractions uh, with combining with electronic information in there. Uh, but surprisingly, this material shows no uh, acoustic phonon anomaly in the materials. So here is a uh, measured phonon dispersions um, using inelastic X-ray scattering uh, with MUV energy scale. So you can, on the left is the at measure or longitudinal acoustic phone normal measured at 50 Kelvin, which is well below the CDW transitions around 100 Kelvin. On the right is the one, it's the same, uh, it's the same longitudinal acoustic mode measured at 300 Kelvin. And both of these, and the, these dispersions crossing the whole, across at, at the QCDW shows a, consistent or identical energy scale or energy mode at the endpoint, which is supposed to at the endpoint or at the CDWQ vector. There is no softening, strong softening of phonon mode down to zero or any behavior like that showing, uh, showing an phonon, acoustic phonon anomaly. So this surprising result basically strict, directly rule out the possibility of strong electron phonon coupling and also through all the possibility of a cone anomaly that actually should be able to found in these materials. And this is this, um, this unchanged for acoustic phonon mode can also be found in transverse acoustic uh, and multiple temperature scale in the uh, longitudinal acoustic mode in other directions. Um, this is a stark contrast to the previous understanding of the CDW materials or conventional CDW material with zeichrome triterroride or nalbium diselenide, then phonon softening can be clear, nicely observed in, uh, in X-ray spectra. So, but this, this may actually be explained by the transition itself. Although in the, um, uh, although in some of the compound it show a, more to uh, second order phase transition like, but in one of the compound, the cesium valadium compound, we can tell that at higher temperature, I mean, above the CDW, slightly above the CDW transitions, we can see actually second order transition evolving by looking, by following the CDW peak intensity uh, tracking from the X-ray scattering. Um, this actually is, is a direct pro of the uh, order parameter evolution in temperatures. So at temperature above the CW transition, about 92.5 Kelvin, there is, this is inside the, yes, inset is a log scale plot. There's already a uh, intensity right in increasement, gradual intensity increasement in the, um, uh, in the peak intensity or the peak spectral weight, actually. So, but however, at exactly the transition, there's a sharp increase or a sharp transition, looks like a first order phase transition for the CDW blue state. Uh, this effect is much more, uh, much more robust in the, uh, in the L equal to 0.5 or the two by two by two CDW peak comparing to the in plane L equal to zero uh, CDW peak, although there's some more, also a weak features here. Um, and then mass spectroscopy also detected these two transitions uh, coincide or, uh, or actually they can separate in them together by focusing on uh, different uh, magnet, uh, different uh, nuclear, uh, different nuclear resonances. So they found actually there's a two second order phase transitions, which are supposed to give rise to acoustic phonon anomalies, uh, because they should be continuous in energy. Oh, but then there's another first order phase transitions that actually sharp jump of uh, in the NMR night shift. So this gives rise to a very interesting result, actually, based on a Landau model theory calculations before. The in-plane uh, in order parameters, let's say call it M or two by two by one, 
or one you can you can see more clearly in the brilliant zone plot, which is just scattering from gamma to m. This is the uh, this is the weight vector that is uh, is resulted from the three q weight vector uh, as I pointed out before for the in plane settle point to settle point scattering. So this in plane scattering cannot give rise to any first order phase transition, or in principle, it cannot actually stable itself in the Pagomay material based on CDW calculations. Um, first, from DFT calculation, they need to have a stacking ordering, which is consistent with our finding of a three-dimensional charge density wave and give rise to this L wave vector from scattering from gamma to L. Um, so um, then, this in plane, so there's no, uh, there is, there's impossible stacking of a say star of David, every layer this, uh, with the same charge modulation of star of David. But there's possible, there are other, po there are possibility of other stacking order is undetermined. Either it could have an alternating of charge hexagonal or inverse star of David with the star of David, or it could have a uh, pi offset between the same um, charge modulation, say both are trihexagonal with a pi phase shift uh, between cargo main layers. But the key, but the key uh, findings from this era, from this calculation is that by the strong intercoupling of the uh, outer plane order parameters and the in plane order parameters, it will formulate a first order phase transitions. Or actually, it will give to the trilinear term. In the, it will give a trilinear term in the free Landau free energy model, more corresponding to the phase, uh, first order phase transitions. And another key factor is that these stacking, alternating stacking, or actually pi phase shift stacking orders, uh, will give rise to a six fold to a two fold sym rotation symmetry breaking that actually been observed in the bulk, uh, bulk measurement. But the very transition of this uh, phase uh, rotation symmetry breaking phase is kind of controversial for now. Um, so from the electronics, from the more detailed electronic structure study, actually, there is found that finding that there are different pair, there are two, at least two pair, uh, at least two fold settle points, at least two settle points electronic structure can be found very close to the Fermi level. Which pointing here in the uh, band structure calculation as K1, as P and M, or they, they name it as K2 and the other blue one as uh, K2 prime. So, oh, actually K1 and K2, that's kind of weird. Um, but, I'm sorry. Um, so these two pair of electronics, uh, the, the, key, the, tech, the key message here is that these two different uh, Van Hoff singularity or set of point features will give a different KZ dispersions. Say one can slightly cross a Fermi level from transitioning from particle to hole uh, on, along the KZ dispersion in plane from, from the gamma MK plane to the AHL plane. Another one probably will reside in both in the electron electron and probably split into another Van Hoff singularity above the Fermi levels. And they possess different orbital characters uh, inside in, in, uh, in, in this material. So this suggesting that there could be multiple scattering channel in, uh, from between the saddle points or even between saddle points that connecting from the in plane to the outer plane, to the outer plane, uh, from the outer plane electronic structures. Inside the uh, inside this material, and so with using a resonant elastic X-ray scattering to to actually probe into the charge origin or charge distortion in the uh, in the CDW state inside the cesium vanadium compound, and we found that well, actually uh, the resonant the resonant excitation is actually photo, we, we actually excited. The uh, core level, uh, atomic core level electrons to unoccupied conduction state. Uh, here we chose antimony L1H, which is from antimony 2S state to antimony 5P state, which will follow the dipole selection rule. And then when the electronic uh, electron relax back to the core level and give rise to the elastic X ray scattering. So if your charge density wave involved with the antimony charge 
or anti charge distortion, then it can probing the uh, the the, un, the Fermi the conduction uh, charge from the antimony. Then it will give rise to a resonance peak um, from in in the CDW wave in the CDW black peak. So this resonance can actually directly be observed in the X-ray fluorescent state at, at near the resonance peak, a reason resonance edge of the antimony L1 edge at 4.7 keV. And we chose this because of the high, in hard X-ray region, this antimony L1 edge is the ideal, is the pretty much the ideal candidate or the only ideal candidate that obey, obey the dipole selection rule or give us a good cross sections for resonant X-ray uh, study. But surprisingly, we found that in the CDW state of these uh, at integer L or in plane scattering weight vector, there's a strong deep features, which actually not surprising if your CDW does not involve antimony, in, it does not involve antimony charge. So this would be consistent with the theory predictions of that all the, uh, all the CDW is driven by mainly the uh, in plane vanadium, uh, vanadium distortion in the Kagome network. So uh, because the resonant excitation, because the resonant excitations uh, can be a competing process to the black diffractions, so that we, in that case, uh, then your CDW charge intensity will forming a strong dip at the resonant energy, uh, resonant excitation energy around this 4.7 kV for the for the antimony, antimony charge resonance edge. But surprisingly, actually, it's the outer plane half integer L, the outer plane CDW order, show a very uh, show a really strong enhancement at the um, at uh, at the antimony L1 charge L1 edge which is directly suggesting this is a strong contribution of antimony charge distortion inside the CDW modulations for specifically for the half integer L. And this case, and the orcs also can directly observe from the black peak, uh, directly from the raw data, black peak raw data. So this is directly give up two, um, two messages. This one is that the CDW order at integer L, say the two by two by one, does not involve any antimony charge distortion. Whereas the CDW order at half integer L has strong contribution from the antimony charge. Well, this is this is contrad strongly contradict to the previous conclusions that order trans density wave is simply involving with the Kagome, even, even though they have stacking orders, but they're all dominated by the in-plane process from the vanadium charge distortion. But here it directly points to a two distinct charge orders. Now, one one does not involve antimony charge distortion, one involved. And these two charge orders actually emerge simultaneously in the CDW, in the same CDW transitions uh, pointed out uh, at around 100 Kelvin. Um, and this is a unusual coexistence of charge order with the same in plane wave vector that hasn't been really been studied before. The only, the only comparison would be the uh, coexistent charge order found in high in cuprate that specifically in YBCO cuprate that there's two coexistent charge orders uh, a 2D and a 3 also a 2D and 3D charge orders that forming uh, under high but that's only forming under high magnetic field or uniaxial strain in uh, in YBCO cuprate and this is a really this is a, the second example of coexistent charge order that exactly involve, involving different charge or have different charge origins or charge distortions uh, in the same materials uh, arising at the same transitions. And more important and more interestingly is that we can actually separate these two charge orders uh, by applying high pressure, um, high pressures of up to at one gigapascal to the materials that uh, we can well separate the transition of these two orders uh, by over four, uh, by a gap temperature gap of four Kelvin. So the blue one is the blue one is the order parameter transition of the L equal to zero, the in plane CDW order, and the yellow one is L L equal to 0 0.5 the outer plane CDW order. And at and at lower pressure, 0.5 gigapascal, you can see that these two order parameter follows really well along along each other in temperature evolutions. So, so this is a so which um, these two general orders separated under high pressures is 
also a direct evidence saying there's a coexistent two charge orders instead instead of even two instead of like there are two uh, scattering weight vectors but the same CDW transitions in one material as predicted in the previous uh, theory. So this adding a more an, another more interesting fact for this high pressure study is that uh, remember I mentioned there's actually two C, uh, superconducting dome inside this material. Uh, the second one, which is, has the highest TC, about seven to eight Kelvin, coincide with the disappearance of the uh, charge density wave. But there's actually around 0.7 gigapascal, there's another CTW dome emerging here. Whereas the 0 0.5, which 0.5 gigapascal data and one gigapascal data, Reside on reside on two sides of this CDW dome. Um, this actually and also and in and in between these two CDW dome between the 0 0.7 and the two gigapascal, the CDW transition width strongly highly broadened. This is um and and this is prob this is likely uh, suggesting. There's also a uh, there's also a connection between the separation of charge order to the suppression of the superconductivity. So it may not be a simply competing order between the superconducting state and the CDW state. As suggested, if we simply look at the second dome of the second dome of the uh, of the phase diagram, where the CDW disappears, and see the superconducting appears. But the, the the separation of the CDW actually also causing a uh, a suppression of the superconductivity. So, so this actually gives rise to another interesting factor that the CW is has a strong in strong interplay with the superconductivity. Uh, last feature, last but not I mentioned, is that there's a controversial for a not unidirectional charge order also forming in this material that you can direct is directly observed in the STM work uh, um, reported recently in a nature paper that is besides of the 2a two by two by one uh two a not uh superstructure they also arise a unidirectional it's one by four or four a not uh superstructure on the surface of this material because it's stm measurement but um but this pneumaticity can this pneumaticity can also be confirmed or this anisotropy can also be confirmed uh by bulk uh magneto transport result you know, transport measurement. And it's and it emerges actually below, slightly below the, uh, well, not slightly, actually well below the CDW transitions, somewhere probably around 60 or 50 Kelvin. Uh, so other people have given the name of the T star time, uh, T star temperature scale. However, if based on the simple image of a uh, Kagome CDW from it, uh, uh, interlayer coupling that in this in the different stacking if there's a pi phase shift stacking uh disorder uh, or, uh ordering stack ordering in the between the two cargo may cdw um although the in-plane cargo may uh, charge density wave has always preserved six fold symmetry the stacking of them uh, or the 3d structure of them will naturally broke the six fold symmetry to a two fold uh, rotation symmetry so so whether this 4A not pneumaticity state really arising or, or actually whether this uh, pneumaticity really arising from a so-called 4A not charge order is controversial. And we cannot locate any, using our high resolution X-ray diffraction, we cannot locate any uh, 4A not charge orders in this material. So it's potentially could be a surface state that uh, the unidirectional surface state that actually projected by the uh, by the bulk rotational symmetry breaking inside the material. So here's a strong, here's a summary of my work of my talk today. Um, these vanadium cargome metal basically uh, produce it an intriguing arena for thermal surface instabilities with all the different uh, symmetry breaking orders: CDW, pneumaticity, superconductivity, pair density wave, and um, our XR and our X-ray. And our past words actually confirm the electronic structure with a band hole feeling. And also we point to a absence of phonon anomaly in the CDW. So it cannot be uh, a conventional electron phonon coupling CDW 
uh, as proposed in, in CDWA by pyro transitions or strong electron phonon coupling uh, driven CDW. So, and we also pointing out there's a unique features of conjoined CDW orders that involve not only just a different weight vector, but actually involving different charge origins. And they can be actually separated under high pressure. A unique case that can only previously been found in a high TC group rate, but not sure whether there's a connection. And at last, there's a strong intertwining CDW and intertwining CDWs and the superconductivity state. So this work is performed, the RPS work partly performed at our in-house RPS lab at ORNL. And we also have strong collaborations. Uh, we also, and also the, uh, all the X-ray scattering data and some of RPS works is also taken at synchrotron facilities. We use synchrotron facility from Argon, Brookhaven and SSIL. And last is the acknowledgement part. Uh, thanks my supervisor, Hu Miao and Ho Niang Li at ONL and our sample grower from Kuchang Lei in Renmin University and help from Beamline scientist and postdoc at Beamline and theory and, uh, and theories for discussion and such. All right, thank you.